Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jason, KM6FAK, and I thought I would fire up the camera, get things going for the unboxing of my brand new radio. Now this radio has been out a little bit, but it's new to me. I've been saving up my lunch money for quite a while now, and uh, after a lot of thinking about what I wanted, I decided to pull the trigger. Uh, stick around after I uh, unbox it and open it up, and I will tell you my seven reasons why I bought the Yaesu FT991A. So I decided to go with DX Engineering. There's definitely a lot of choices out there on uh, where you want to buy a radio. And you know, one thing I can say about DX Engineering is I really enjoy their website, how it works, their searchability. All right, so uh, let's, let's, che let's check it out here. So what did I pay? So I paid just shy of twelve hundred dollars, eleven ninety nine. Um, yeah, pretty good deal. I mean, they kind of said they had a, a sale going on. Nicely bubble wrapped. One thing I did pick up with this order is uh, a bunch of Anderson power poles. I uh, I really think these are pretty sweet. I don't have any yet. So this is, this is the first of it. I figure let's start it out with, with a new radio. I also bought a crimping tool. I don't know where that is yet. Ah, there it is. What else? Let's see. Yeah, here we go. This little crimping tool. Um, this is for the Anderson power poles. That little guy there, and that goes with the DX Engineering crimper that I already have. All right, here it is. I like how this box says front. I'm not sure what that has to do with anything, but let's take a look. Oh, I see. There's unpacking procedure, two of one. Unpacking procedure, two of two. <laughs> I mean, that's great they put that there, but I, I think I can handle it. So what's in the box? Nice big manual, very fat. Oh man, there's the map. You know, I, uh, I often wonder where people got this map from. I see it in a lot of people's shack photos there in uh, QRZ or what have you. Um, but there it is, that's pretty cool. I'll be... I don't have a good wall in here because I'm in the garage. So what do we got? We got a 25 amp fuse, a map, a very thick manual, a sticker of course, lots of cable. I mean that looks, that looks like a nice long length right there. So that feels pretty good. What gauge do we got? 12 gauge, 12 gauge. Fairly flexible, nice and soft feeling. Microphone. All right, let's see what this looks like. Oh, geez. Oh. So we got a clip. You know, I don't, uh, I don't utilize these clips a whole lot. Most of the time, the microphone just kind of lays around. Ooh. Smell it. Yeah, that smells pretty nice. Let's listen to it. That sounds pretty nice. Ah, yes. The good old Yesu uh, RJ45, the 8 pinner. That's something I want to um, kind of do. Oh, it actually. <laughs> hey, look at that. I didn't know it does that. I want to make my own, my own cable. Uh, one day in the future so then I can utilize the microphone capture all that so we got a down and up and a fast FST I don't know what that means tone one and two on the back okay that feels nice though that's your typical Yesu mic as you would get in something mobile all right so are we following the instructions <laughs> I, I think we're going to be okay. Nothing there. Uh, 
here. Let's remove this. Now there's the radio. Let's do this. There's just something about. There's just a lot of satisfaction in being the first person to pull it out of its plastic. I'm guessing this was built in Japan. I don't know. I'm thinking it probably was. Oh, yeah. I always like smelling new things. Check, it, check that out. Oh, man, that is, that is nice. All right, let's get the camera going. Obviously, we see we've got the power button over there, and then we've got uh, we've got two jacks. Uh, those there are 3.5 millimeter. Various of buttons, which I enjoy quite a bit, having buttons on a radio opposed to menu-driven items. Um, these buttons here, I'm aware that they're backlit. We'll get that fired up in a little bit. We'll check that out. You've got your multi knob. Uh, as you turn it, each segment has detents, so it kind of does a little bit of a click, 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 if you will, without the sound. The, uh, the main VFO spins very freely, and at the same time, it has this collar right here where if I turn it clockwise, it, it snugs it up quite a bit, so I can really get in there. much looser that way we have a uh, clarifier uh, this guy here it actually is, is pretty stiff you know it it almost feels like the collar on this is, is all the way and then next we have RF gain uh, it feels a lot better smooth left to right and then AF gain uh, might as well just call that volume and that, that's even smoother or lighter. There's no resistance there. So it's got some feet. You can give it a pull down. It gives you a nice angle if you're going to be operating from the desk. And you want to, you know, obviously spin around, keeping your hand comfortably. <laughs> um, speaker on this radio is on the top. Right there. As well as it has a uh, a carrying handle on the side, pretty darn tight. So that feels pretty good. And then it looks like you could swap it. You could swap it to the other side, put the carrying handle there, or possibly maybe you want to uh, install the the mount they sell. Whether you put it in your car or maybe some kind of cool go box. Let's check out the back. All right, looking at the back of the radio, you're going to have a nice uh, fan here. Keep it cool inside. You're going to notice you've got your connector for the HF, your antenna, and then over here is going to be for the 2 meter and 70 centimeter, as well as your ground. Uh, your power goes into there. You have a RTTY slash data DIN connector, and then you have a tune uh, linear DIN connector. You have a GPS cat, uh, kind of looking uh, VGA serial port. Your standard uh, USB, I believe that I believe they call that a USB B, but you know you're run of the mill connected to a printer. Um, you also have an exterior speaker 
and a remote ACL. Now, I did a little research uh, buying this radio. I do have a Amtron AL811 amplifier, and I didn't want to be without my amplifier. So I went ahead on eBay and bought this, uh, I think it was about $17 cable. I'll, uh, I'll leave all the links below. Uh, Made in America came here within two days. Pretty remarkable. By the way, the radio got here in about seven days, so one full week. But anyways, back to the cable. So we have our, uh, so the DIN here will go here to the tune linear amplifier. And all it does is breaks out one pin uh, right into my amplifier so it can fire. All right, let's, uh, let's get the cable uh, ready to go with the Anderson power poles. Power poles are installed. This is uh, my first go at them. If, uh, if you want to see a full detailed video, I'll leave a, uh, a link below down in the descriptions. A friend, uh, friend of the club, Bruce, he definitely has frequent the channel quite a bit. He did a whole presentation on the Anderson power poles. Pretty much, you know, right there off where the fuses were. Put them on the end. A um, little confusing. Not too bad the first time. Got them all snapped in there. These are the 45 amperes. I got these from DX Engineering. As well as I use the DX Engineering crimping tool. You can get multiple different dies for this tool. And it has a little catch on the back. And so you can see the catch is on the bottom. It doesn't come with instructions or anything, so it's not too terribly obvious. But when you put it in here, you can see it actually stays with it. The holes do anyways. And that allows you to stick it in there and it stops. It stops real nice. And you want to put it in just like that and then bring it down. Are you excited? <laughs> I'm excited. All right, this will be the first time I'm firing it up. Let's see what it looks like. Well, it looks like that. <laughs> so let's see here. I have it hooked up to a... Uh, my two meter J pole outside. First of all, let's bring that down. So like I said, this is the multi knob. Pushing that selects it, I can bring it all the way down to a minimum of five. And mode, FM, band, 144. All right, I'm loaning it my hat. Try to get that screen a little, uh, a little sharper for everyone here. Screen does look really nice. Let's see, waterfall, spectrum. All right, spectrum. Let's go waterfall. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Is there something right there? Some kind of interference. All right, well, let's go uh, check out the setup menu. I thought it was going to prompt me this when uh, when we turned it on. But maybe this was turned on already somewhere back at DX Engineering. All right, so we'll put in my call. Uh, do I just start here? Okay. All right. Okay. Call sign in. Latitude and longitude. So let's start off with latitude. Three, eight. Longitude, one, two, one. Five, six. Four, two. And this is west what's today's date oh that's interesting 
I'm pretty sure this was turned on. Um, how the heck does it know the date? That's today's date. I don't know if you can tell or not. I guess I should kill the lights. These lights are glowing. Uh, not these lights. These buttons are glowing. So let's see about putting a uh, local repeater in. Seeing if we can get a radio check now. You might see this flicker on the video, but it does not flicker for my eyes at all. It looks great. It might be flickering, but that's just a, uh, a frame rate shutter speed issue. All right, so we are in our band and our mode, FM. And we can go back to band and we can enter in our frequency. So the local repeater is 145-470. Enter. Okay. Oh, it looks like we got some traffic down there. So it looks like it also has uh, picked up. It's a negative offset right there. We'll set up our tone. RPL is 127.3. Ah. All right. So we'll do encode. It looks like uh, CTCSS. This is for encode and decode. No, we're not. We don't have that. Not that off. We'll put it there so the other repeater doesn't bother us. We'll go back to the scope. Oh, you got to be careful. This here gets bumped real easily. So I can add a little resistance to it. And I'm going to lock it. And I won't be bothering it. All right. Got the microphone. Let's see uh let's see if we can get a kerchunk. W6 V V R repeater. All right. Very good. That sounded pretty good. And I know we can we can adjust the scope. So we can go all the way to a thousand. Let's see what that looks like. So now we can see more across. Or we can get it much smaller. But I'd like to see more of the scope. All right. Let's see, uh, let's see how I sound. KM6 FAK, just put a new radio online. Anyone out there for a radio check? This is KM6 FAK. Hey, good morning, Jason. How are you today, K7CD? KM4 LM. Hey, two stations. Good morning, TJ. Yeah, doing great. Actually, uh, you're going to be on YouTube, sir. I'm in the process of filming a new radio, a Yesu FT991A, so... Just got the repeater dialed in, going over the uh, the menu, how to set that in and store it. Go ahead, TJ, and then we'll hear from the other station out there. That's good, Jason. You're full quieting into the repeater, and um, the audio is, uh, I'd say, right about uh, uh, where it needs to be. Sounds good. All right, great. How about the other station that came back? Go ahead. Sound uh, pretty good on this end, too, wa 6 cd Okay, very good. Good morning, GM. Yeah, just running uh, the old 5 watts off the J-pole on the chimney. Pretty neat little radio. Here in a little bit, I'm going to get it connected to the computer and start messing around with some digital stuff. All of a sudden, everyone's talking about FT4, and I haven't even gotten uh, FT8 going yet. How 
Alrighty, gentlemen, I'll be signing off. Save this into memory channel one. Talk to you later. KM6 FAK. Yeah, that's pretty nice. It's pretty neat seeing the uh, waterfall and the scope as people are uh, as people are coming back to you. Alrighty, so we got that right where we want it. And then here it, uh, it says to push a arrow over to M. Push it once, you bring it up, channel one, and push and hold. Hey, look at that, we're in there now. All right, ran outside and put the inverted V up on 20 meters. It's right around getting close to lunch, so let's see how 20 meters looks. Hey, there's my call sign. That was pretty cool. All right, so we'll go to band. Um, what's interesting is it doesn't really say, it says band, but there's not 20 meters. You can't, you know, you have to push the frequency. So 14, 14 will get you there. And now you can see the waterfall and display. So let's get a little, little volume. Well, let's make sure uh, upper sideband. So that that's good. So then there's a fast button I can push, and then I'll go faster. I'm not talking about the initial call, but later on. All right. That looks a little better there. Oh, this is nothing more than a birdie. It's a noise. What about down here? Is that a station? They've been buying water now since the first of March this year, so uh very, very dry here. We've already had quite a few forest fires, the last one being just last weekend here, about two miles away from my house. KE0, Delta Quebec Uniform, Victor Echo 7, Mike, Tango, Whiskey, over. Let's see what the SWR is. One, two, one, two. <whistles> Although I'm only on five watts. Let's see what I'm at, 50 watts. One, two, one, two. <whistles> KM6, FAK. Is this frequency in use? All right, let's take it to a hundred. One, two, one, two. What's my S level? S5, how do you like that? Yeah, it's not so great, is it? It does have the tune function, although my SWR looks pretty darn good. <whistles> One, two, test. KM6, FAK. And that turns the tuner on. But you got to hold it, I believe. Let's, let's give it a hold. Okay. That was pretty interesting. All right, now let's see what I am. Test one, two, one, two. <whistles> one, two, one, two. KM6, FAK. Oh, look at that. I bumped that off again. Gosh. There's a station right over there, though. Let me go say hi. Well, let's go down to them. Let's see what's going on down here. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, that's just a whole lot of noise. Oh, 
All right. Well, they're right there. So let's see. I'm still learning my way around here, but there is there's some fanciness. Whoa. That just took the birdie away. Uh, I can't hear him there. Well, it looks like I can hear the one station better than the other. But how crazy is that? There's some birdie right there. Look at this. Boy, how interesting is that? Well, I tell you, that was a uh, a big motivator uh, to buy a new radio once I discovered what these newer radios can do. Uh, currently running a uh, a Tentec Omni Six Plus. I'll have to do a, a comparison video, but I know for a fact I could have not pulled these stations out. I mean, the one station's very weak, but this guy—he's coming in. Oh yeah, I could totally carry a QSO on in those conditions. Oh man, yeah. So I'll have to uh, experiment with the radio some more and uh, do more videos around it. Obviously, I just unboxed it, so I'm I'm just kind of figuring it out for the first time. I think it's fairly intuitive. All right, the $1,000 question. Why the Yaesu 991A? Um, that ICOM 7300 is a very sweet radio. And quite honestly, I started just uh, thinking about all the different features one radio might have compared to the other. Uh, I personally came up with seven, uh, seven reasons why I chose uh, this here Yaesu radio opposed to the 7300. And uh, starting with number one, a built-in tuner. Uh, carry one less thing when portable. Now, of course, the tuner, I would only recommend for running the 100 watts out of the radio. No shortage of robocallers. Now, the built-in tuner also is found in the ICOM 7300. So both of those are, are just as equal. Uh, definitely nice to have a built-in tuner if you're just running the 100 watts out of the box. Um, this radio has a built-in sound card. Again, so does the ICOM 7300. And the idea with a built-in sound card, if you haven't went down that road yet, is you simply just plug in your USB cable and you can start operating some kind of digital mode. I know a uh, very popular one right now is the FT8. And just this week, as I'm recording this, uh, the FT4 was announced, so. Touch screen with a waterfall. I mean, who doesn't want a touch screen with a waterfall? The uh, both radios, the 7300 and this radio, both have the touch screen as well as the waterfall. I can say the 7300 has a little bit of a bigger, maybe nicer screen. Um, the 7300, you can make the waterfall a lot bigger compared to the 991A, where uh, you're limited just to what they give you. Um, I've seen the 7300, you can expand the waterfall or, or bring it down. Who knows, maybe Yaesu will release some kind of software in the future and give that uh, capability. Um, so the next one is going to be the size. And so that's where this uh, Yaesu starts kind of leaving the ICOM uh, a little behind, in my opinion. Although the size is very similar, but this one is a little bit smaller. Um, the idea of grabbing it, throwing it in the RV, activating some potas. This does come with a handle. 
Not a deal breaker. I'm sure you can get a handle for the 7300, but that's a nice little touch. Number five, this radio has two meters and 70 centimeters built in. I wasn't necessarily looking for that or needing that. I have a mobile rig um, in the garage here. I have some older Motorola's. But with that, the idea of going portable and not pulling out my portable rig in my car um, and the motor rolls in the garage are fairly limited. So what's programmed in there is, is what you're going to use. Uh, number six for me is this guy is uh, C4FM fusion ready. So in other words, I'm able to uh, operate digitally in the proprietary C4FM mode. Uh, for what I understand, that's going to be on your HF, your VHF, and your UHF. I've not really experimented much with that. But the big deciding factor was my local club just recently bought a system fusion repeater. And that's soon going to go up on the hill. And at that point, I'll be able to, uh, to jump into a room, uh, keep touch with my local repeater. I mean, I, I didn't want to be left behind. So... The last number seven, um, <laughs> nine out of ten people I talk to on HF will uh, will come back when uh, you know we're talking about what are you running, what's your rig, what's your antenna. They'll come back and say, "Oh yeah, this seventy three hundred, it's such a great radio," and and it is. It sounds like it absolutely is. But uh, for once in my life, I wanted to be the one percenter. I didn't want to say, "Yeah, me too, seventy three hundred all the way." So I kind of like the idea of getting something different in the shack, being able to talk about, let's say, the things that I like or that I don't like with this radio. Otherwise, um, gosh, if everyone was on 7300s on HF, that could be a little boring after a while. I don't know. All good radios, of course. I looked again in the box that everything came in, you know, because I got the, uh, the power poles, uh, the crimper chuck or die and then this radio and i couldn't find a dx engineering sticker do they still give you stickers uh, a couple years ago i bought something smaller and i got a sticker so i was a little bummed i didn't get a sticker heck i might even uh put it here on the door perhaps that could be fun to sticker that up so what's up dx engineering send me a sticker <laughs> all right well <clears throat> hope you enjoyed it Leave any comments below if you got questions. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Hope to catch you on HF with the new radio. And I'll talk with you guys later. 7-3.